So why do you wish to join the civil service? So I wish to join the civil service because of the diversity of opportunity it provides. With that, there is a good career prospect and I also get to serve the society. Good, very nice. So what qualities do you possess which will make you a good civil servant? So I think I have a decent knowledge of the society. I am honest and have uh, and possess integrity. I am patient and have a good uh, and can understand people. I am sensitive towards people of the society. I think these qualities make me able to be joining the services. When did you complete your BSc honors? So I completed my BSc honors in 2016. Okay. Since then, what have you been doing? Uh, so I uh, started preparing in 2016. I gave oh. my first right. interview. Uh, pushing is hmm. uh, what is judicial activism? So judicial activism is a means by which judiciary tries to enter the premises of the legislature or the executive. Uh, however, it uh, does so in the constitutional means itself when it sees that certain laws are lacking in certain areas or uh, implementation of these laws has not been done properly. Can you uh, think of some cases where you think and you feel that judiciary crossed the limits and uh, maybe it amounted to judicial activism as per your definition? Uh, sir, on the top of my mind, I have one incident where uh, judiciary uh, announced that CNG buses should be made compulsory in Delhi. Uh, so that is one. Uh, you have heard of Visaka guidance? Yes, sir. Do you think that was activism? Uh, uh, sir, it, I, would, I wouldn't say it was activism per se, uh, but definitely because judiciary entered the premises of uh, making these guidelines and uh, uh, directed to have them implemented. So, uh, Yes, sir. It would be a borderline case of judicial activism. What is the present scenario with respect to the present law on sexual harassment at workplace? Uh, sir, I don't exactly remember. Uh, the name. You don't need to know, but you know what has happened. What happened subsequently? Yes, sir. What is yes, the new sir. development? So the development right now is that all the uh, uh, um, companies and firms, they have to implement uh, sexual harassment guidelines. Uh, which are there in the, uh, mentioned in the Vishakha guidelines and uh, they also need to have an ICC uh, to oversee any complaints that come in uh, for sexual harassment in workplaces. Okay, now I need to point out the Vishakha guidelines, the court itself said that there is a vacuum, that's why we are saying, saying that these guidelines are there. Yes. Till enactment of a law, now law has been enacted. Yes. Okay, what do you think about uh, the Me Too move? Uh, I think the Me Too movement was uh, a great step forward because it brought in a lot of changes in the way victims were perceived earlier before this movement. I also feel that Me Too movement changed the way uh, organizations used to function before it. It also gave a lot of courage to women to come in and complain uh, right on the spot. They got a lot of force with the other women in the society who joined in uh, and in such and because of that um, many women who had faced a lot of harassment five or ten years back were also able to come out and uh, was it on account of systemic failure or vacuum in law because why because if there is law they could have invoked the law as well so the laws are not as such uh, we i wouldn't wouldn't say that there are Yes, laws. Laws are definitely there, but yes, there have been some errors in implementation and at a societal level, we have not been able to bring in the change in mentality towards women as such because of which a social movement like Me Too uh, was necessary. Recently, one judgment was delivered uh, with respect to uh, 1984 uh, incident. Do you remember what was 
So could you please? Uh, Sikh. It was related to uh, uh, violence against Sikh. But uh, yes, sir, Sikh riots case. Okay. Uh, what was that case? So the judgment that came in was, uh, uh, so uh, one of the people uh, was from uh, the Congress party that time was convicted uh, in the Sikh riots case of 1984. Okay, there was a, um, right now there was a Supreme Court uh, um, ruled against certain uh, practices in the Sidhul Caste Act. Subsequently, there is an amendment. Amendment. What is the latest position on that? Uh, so some uh, now some review petitions have been filed. The last year, Supreme Court had uh, uh, allowed the changes, the amendments which were uh, which were brought in by the government in uh, prevention of atrocities against SCST. Earlier, uh, anticipatory bails were not being provided. But according to these amendments, now they can apply for anticipatory bail. Uh, Supreme Court allowed these changes because it felt that a lot of cases which were coming in were actually fake cases and the conviction rate was low because of that. Okay, last question. What was the judgment in that case between Delhi government and the uh, Lieutenant Governor? What was the judgment by the Supreme Court? So, uh, by the judgment of this case against of uh, Delhi government versus the Lieutenant Governor, Supreme Court cleared the position of the government and said that Delhi itself has a special status and it is actually a constitutional hybrid. This, these are the words which Supreme Court used. Earlier, uh, the Lieutenant Governor had uh, could uh, take a lot of matter to the President, which will not be uh, happening right, right now. Uh, the Supreme Court also cleared that the Lieutenant Governor has to work clearly on the aid and advice of the Council of Ministers of the Delhi Government. And uh, because, what are the three subjects which are there with the centre? Sir, so, uh, land, public order, and police. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. Pass, sir. Yes, sir. You are BSc in physics. Yes, sir. You have opted for sociology as your option. Yes, sir. Why so? Uh, sir, actually, when I took physics after standard 12, I had a lot of interest in physics. But after uh, studying it for one year, I realized that uh, I do not, I do not have a calling for that subject. It was maybe because of uh, my way of uh, looking at it. So, in my second year of physics, I uh, decided to take up civil services. And then after my graduation, when I uh, started researching about which subject should I take. I found sociology syllabus uh, uh, quite uh, easy for me. I, I thought that I could do it. And also I looked at the question papers and the uh, uh, past year questions. And I found that uh, if I take up the subject, then I can score a decent okay. amount of marks. You were interested in ODC. Yes, sir. As well as Bollywood dancing. Yes, sir. What is the difference? So, uh, these two are uh, totally different dance forms per se because ODC comes from the classical dance form school and Bollywood dancing is has everything uh, encompasses everything in it and ODC dance is specific to the culture of Odisha and there are a lot of traditional elements in ODC dance Where from it came? So it comes from the temple uh, dances called the Devadasi or the Mamali dance Name 5 uh, living ODC dancers Prominent. Yes, sir. So the five prominent living Odissi dancers would be Sunar Khan Singh, uh, Kumku Mahanti, uh, Madhvi Mudgal, uh, Aruna Mahanti, and uh, uh, Sir Gyanam Yeah. Okay. Name one foreign you know, citizen who has adopted this form of classical dance and made a name. She has a dance school also. Sir, uh, she would be Ileana Sitaris. Correct. Correct. Okay. You have heard of the Kaliya scheme of Odisha? Yes, sir. How it is a march over the other schemes for uh, relieving these uh, farmers of their distress? 
sir, uh, Kalia scheme is a revolution because it's not a farm loan waiver scheme, mm. which is being seen in most states right now. Mm. Secondly, it is applicable to all sections of farmers, landless farmers, cultivators, sharecroppers, landowners. Thirdly, the scheme covers not just farming, it also gives uh, alternatives for fisheries and agro-processing industry. It would be a direct, direct income transfer scheme and uh, which would allow farmers to have 5,000 rupees in Ravi and 5,000 rupees in Kharif season. Have they started to implement it? Yes sir, it has been started in some areas, not in the whole state. How much fund is your mark for this? Any idea? Uh, yes sir, the funding is of uh, uh, 10,000 crore. Okay. Th around 10,000 crore. It's, it's more than that. Yes, but, okay. Uh, tell me, um, you know, Orissa, you are from Orissa. Yes. Orissa is full of mineral resources. Yes, sir. But it is still a poor and backward state. Yes, sir. Why it is so? So there are some factors which are responsible uh, why the state has been backward despite having a lot of mineral resources. The first would be infrastructure. Uh, the infrastructure development is low, which includes both the basic and the infrastructure needed for industries. The second would be low level of industrialization. So the third would be uh, the uh, human resource development has been low, because of which poverty still remains. There is a lack of skill development in the state. Uh, so, and the, I think these are the basic reasons why it remains backward. Can you tell me something about the smart city projects? So the smart cities pro city project is a, a flagship scheme of the present government. It is to um, make the cities which we live in today better in terms of infrastructure, in terms of living conditions, uh, uh, to bring about uh, digital technologies and digital interventions to uh, change the way cities function. It would also have components of better waste disposal, traffic management, uh, law and order. Uh, How many maintenance. cities have been enlisted? Uh, sir, uh, sir that I don't know the correct figure right now, but uh, initially 100 cities would be there. 100 cities were taken on. What is the budget sir. last year? Whether they have allocated something out of the total amount kept for this? Sir, I don't know. Okay, thank you. You studied sociology. Yes, ma'am. Tell me, what are the effects of immigrations? Now, immigrations, uh, firstly, are a huge burden on the resources. Secondly, because of immigration, the social conditions are affected in an area. The immigrants in an area have to be uh, face a lot of problem in uh, merging with the living conditions of the cities. There is a problem of housing, of uh, any other kind of resource distribution that has to happen. Have you heard of the Rohingyas? Yes, ma'am. What is the problem about the Rohingyas? Ma'am, uh, the Rohingyas come from prosecuted minorities of uh, Myanmar. They were pushed out of the country uh, because of the prosecution that was happening from the uh, Buddhist sections of those areas. So do we have also some Rohingyas in our country? Yes ma'am, we do. What's their present status? Ma'am, uh, last year an effort was made to uh, uh, have a deliberation with Bangladesh to send the Rohingyas to Bangladesh because it was seen that some radical elements present in these Rohingya community could pose a danger for our society. And right now, we are working on that front to have continuous dialogue and deliberation so as to have them safely deported back. It has been said that the values of our youth are changing in India. What would you ascribe these changes to? Do you think sociology relieved of charge? Ma'am, the uh, youth today are far more integrated with technology and society because of social media, digitalization and uh, mass media present today. What about concepts like westernization, urbanization, yes, modernization, would these also affect 
Yes, ma'am. Sure. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, uh, westernization, modernization, urbanization are concepts which are affecting the whole society as such, and the youth form a large part of the society. So, uh, westernization, uh, modernization, as uh, as we know, they are uh, external factors which uh, come in and affect the society. They bring in changes in lifestyle, food, culture, um, uh, you, uh, taste of the people. So the youth today are very much influenced by the Western factors and the Western influences that our society is facing. How does urbanization affect them? The urbanization uh, has led, there are positive and negative factors. What are the negative factors? Now the negative factors would be that uh, because of extreme amount of urbanization, the, the youth face a problem, a, a resource crunch. The number of jobs are declining in the cities where the youth go out for work. Uh, and uh, because we have a significant demographic dividend, so the, uh, the youth... What do you mean by a demographic dividend? Man, demographic dividend is uh, the, the kind of youth bulge that we see. That is, the people in the working age from 15 to 59 years are in large numbers. But if they are not skilled, then what would happen? Now that is the issue. If uh, though we have a huge demographic dividend, but unskilled demographic dividend would actually lead to a disaster because they would enter into social crimes and uh, um, create nuisance in the society. So skilled demographic dividend would mean we have more people in the job sector and they are able to contribute to the formal economy. Okay. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Pasana, yes, sir. The problem of left wing extremism continues to haunt Odisha, right? Uh, in fact, I think Odisha is one of the most important states where this problem is persisting. How would you, as a student of sociology, what is your take on that? So, I, uh, left wing extremism uh, was uh, very rampant during the 2010 to 11, but it has been declining since last few years. That is because of the combined effort of center and state. This basically happened in the state because of uh, the infrastructure deficit and development deficit that we saw in many parts of Western Orissa as opposed to the coastal Orissa which was getting developed. So these people, especially in the tribal belt, they were being radicalized by a certain section of the Maxilids and the Maoists and they were entering the left-wing extremism. However, in the last 50 years and from the reports, we have seen that there is a huge decline in their numbers and that is majorly because of this Are you aware that 115 districts have been identified by the government of India, which is called the Square Small Districts? Yes, sir. How many districts from Odisha figure in this list of 115? Any idea? And how have they been identified? On what basis? Sir, uh, I don't remember the figure from Odisha. But uh, these districts are majorly the ones which have been left in the, uh, which are uh, behind in the development index. And uh, basically, these are the districts which would be taken up uh, by, uh, uh, which would be taken and up. Who in, monitors the progress? The district magistrate is uh, will be monitoring the progress. And uh, at the macro level, at the government of India level, which is an organization of which ministry. So the Niti Aayog. Niti Aayog, right? Okay, now. Niyamgiri, you must have heard of that, right? What is the significance of Niyamgiri judgment? So the significance is that uh, the it is a, a tribal belt and the tribes were having a problem with the project which had come in to... Uh, which, company, what, which company was it? Uh, uh, so it was... Vedanta. Yes, sir, Vedanta. Right. Okay, continue. So, uh, the uh, Vedant wanted to exploit bauxite from the Niyamgiri area. So, uh, what was the final judgment of the Supreme Court? So, the, in one of the sentences as special. So, the judgment was in favor of the tribals and uh, the indigenous people. Now, the project has will not be uh, taken up. Uh, and uh, these people, because they, they would be having a problem of uh, life. Now, what is the legal or the law point that the Supreme Court made in this judgment? About displacement of travels. Okay. Uh, Udan scheme, you must have heard. Yes, sir. Tell us briefly about the what is the idea behind the Udan scheme. 
So the Udan scheme looks at regional connectivity to uh, many of the tier 2 and tier 3 cities which were not being connected by air. Uh, and in Udan scheme, a lot of cities have been, uh, uh, a lot of cities which were, will be brought in and uh, there will be a subsidy involved, yes, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, and there is an element of subsidizing the unserved and underserved cities. In this so, uh, how is the subsidy to be met? Is there any mode of financing as a part of the scheme? Something called viability gap funding, you are right? Yes, sir. What, is, what does it mean? Yes, sir, in uh, viability, so I, I don't uh, no, no, okay. okay. Any district, from, any place from Odisha which is covered under this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Jhansi and Raukala. Okay. Thank you. Can you recall some two, three major landmark judgments of the Supreme Court in recent months, which have a very wide social impact? Yes, sir. Sir, uh, the first would be the Sabrina judgment in 2008. Uh, the uh, second would be uh, the judgment on uh, of the CBI in the CBI case. So and uh, the third would be S social impact. CBI doesn't have too much, and Sabrimala is confined to only one state. There are some other issues, some other very major judgments. So I can uh, recall these two. Um, privacy. Privacy. So last two, three. Uh, yes, sir, privacy is important. Triple talaq. Yes, sir, triple talaq. What about uh, 377? Decision yes, of 377? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And also, it has decriminalized adultery. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. What is Odisha's growth rate? Now? Sir, uh, last year the growth rate was 7.14 percent. Correct. Got it. This year figures have been coming. No, sir. The official figures are. And but in uh, it was pretty good. 7.1 is not bad. Yes, sir. What is India's average? Sir, this year according to CSO estimates, it's 7.2 percent. And in the uh, Human Development Index, where does it stand? So it stands on the lower end. I am not able to recall the exact ranking. Is Odisha, what are the main features if you look, go to Odisha, go to countryside and all, what impression you get about the state? It has poverty, it has hunger, or the, the people are happy and healthy. What, what impression do you get? So basically, uh, there is a general lack of urban development in Odisha. And uh, because of that, we see only 16% of the population lives in urban areas, as opposed to the national average of 30%. So in no, the I'm talking of overwhelming population lives in the villages, countryside. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Or in suburban areas. No, sir. The what, what is the impression do you get? Do you get this? So the impression that we ha get from countryside is that there is a problem of poverty and uh, even education and health. Malnutrition, do you find that? So, uh, yes, so there is malnutrition, malnutrition. Yeah, uh, though the uh, figures are uh, getting better day by day. Not day by day, possibly. <laughs> possibly in a decade they will get better. Alright, so what are the schemes, government uh, schemes? which are prevalent in Odisha for uh, better health, better food, nutrition, what schemes are in force? So for health, uh, the most important flagship scheme is Biju Swastha Kalyan Yojana. For uh, food and <coughs> health, uh, there are a lot of uh, schemes which are given to the farmers like uh, uh, um, Madhu, uh, the, like uh, Krusha, so I'm not able to remember the names, uh, and uh, uh, even national uh, health mission, which is imposed. 
in uh, is also having some elements of nutrition in it food security act yes sir food mm-hmm. security act which is enforced through the pds system correct or not yes sir yes, mm-hmm. yes sir. that is a, one of the major schemes yes sir now why, uh, visa hasn't accepted uh, uh, ayushman scheme no sir which scheme is better ayushman or bijo so uh, though ayushman bharat has many positives but odisha government uh, has impo- uh, has uh, uh, is going with the bijo swasthya kalyan yojana because it gives uh, the health insurance to around 7 lakh uh, there will be around seven, there will be 7 lakh as the insurance benefit which is 5 lakh per year in ayushman bharat hmm. so that is the so it's a better scheme yes sir. it covers up to 7 lakh yes sir very good so we close the uh, interview here you have performed very well and you have been able to handle all questions with a lot of confidence and good knowledge uh, i'd like to just give you a little feedback most questioning is going to be based on your bio data from bio data it is, what we find is that you number one is you are from odisha so questions on odisha are definitely going to be asked sociology then third would be your uh, uh cultural uh, your 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 extracurricular activities like odc dance etc so we have asked you questions on those also yes. dance forms etc then uh, current affairs and constitutional issues so from that point of view if you see we have asked you about judicial activism visakha sc st act yes. then uh, kalya scheme which is an important scheme Odisha full of mineral resources by sea tour. That is the reason. Uh, you were asked about smart cities and the most livable city in India. You know which is considered the most livable city in India. So I. This uh, ranking has been done by a foreign agency. Yes, sir. Which one? So I think Kanpur is the most livable. Most livable. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's being developed as a smart city, yes, sir. and it comes within the first twenty cities, most livable cities in the world. So, twentieth number is Odisha. You should be proud of it, and but you should know something about it. Yeah. What work has been done there? Yes, okay. Then sociology. We have asked you a large number of questions on sociology, so clean code judgments, and then about Odisha itself, like. Uh, Aishman Bharat scheme, your Biju Patna, Biju scheme, then growth, human development index. These are the areas on which you must focus your attention. Right? Are you ready, Mr. Yes. Carefully. Yes. Good. So you have done very well. Keep up your good work. Is this your first time? Yes, sir. Second. Very good. Thank you. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update.